The physical world is an analog place. The processes that we can see take place with a continuum of states. So when we measure the world, we may end up using some sensor, an analog transducer, which takes that physical process and converts it to a varying voltage. So when we use the Arduino, we have to think, how can we convert that into some computational quantity? Likewise, motors are not simply on or off. They can run with different currents and different rates. So we'll look at the Arduino capacity for this analog input and output. I'm going to introduce a Tinkercad sketch, which has uh, just some analog input. At the bottom is a potentiometer wired between plus 5 and ground. And now the input is going to A0, which is one of the analog inputs on the Arduino chip. I've also wired an oscilloscope uh, up to one of the outputs to see how this program works. So just to, to, just to sort of show it running, I'll just go ahead and start it. And what we see is, uh, as if you look in the serial monitor, there's some number being printed. As I move the knob of the potentiometer, that number is changing, and we get a graph of a varying signal. And also, the oscilloscope is showing some waveform. So let's back off and show this step by step. The first thing that's happening in our loop function is a new function, analog read with a capital R, which takes a pin number, in this case from a different category of labels, A0 is the analog zero pin. What it does physically is it runs some piece of hardware inside the Arduino chip, which measures that voltage, takes a little time, and produces a number, which will return as an integer and store in this input variable. It's specifically a 10-bit converter. So it has 1,024, that's 2 to the 10 power, of uh, values, which range from 0 to 1,023. And that maps to a range of voltages from 0 to 5 volts. So 0 volts produces you know, 0, and 5 volts produces 1,023. And it's proportional in between. We're printing that value out. And then we're also using this analog write function I'll come back to in a second. The first thing to know is it does take some time to do the conversion. If you actually run an Arduino at full rate, you'll see you get roughly 10,000 samples per second on a single pin. The multiple pins are multiplexed through a multiplexer circuit onto the same converter. So if you read multiple pins, that 10 kilohertz overall data rate is just divided by the number of inputs. The other thing is that it has limited precision. It's only 10 bits. It turns out that 1,023 levels, discrete levels, is not bad for a lot of sensors. Uh, but it's still a lot less than uh, other systems. So, for example, um, audio systems are frequently uh, 16 to 24 bits. So the signals are measured with a much higher resolution. The second question is about precision. The, the converter is relatively noisy. So if you're measuring a single value, a physical value, which might seem to have a constant voltage, it's not uncommon for the bottom bit or two of the, of the, of the analog converted value just to vary with noise, which represents a, a change of value, kind of plus one to plus two, um, that's sort of randomly distributed. Um, better circuit practices can keep that down, but basically there's always some amount of noise in the, in the red signal, which of course we don't see in Tinkercad. Um, the other thing is that basically because we're sampling in time, this is a very low rate signal, so we can oversample it tremendously. But if your signal is varying quickly, then the sampling rate can definitely introduce artifacts and aliasing. And so this is only relatively good for fairly slow signals like these physical transducers and not that applicable to audio. If you try to measure a microphone directly with an Ar Ar Arduino, it's just not possible to measure above roughly 5 kilohertz signals because of that 10 kilohertz sampling rate. And in practice, it's just very hard to measure audio directly using analog input. The second element here is this analog write, which isn't actually an analog output. If we go ahead and run this simulation again, what we see is I read the value of voltage on the potentiometer, and I get some number. And here I am bringing the wiper up of, of the potentiometer up to the 5 volt rail to see the maximum value. And here I'm bringing it back down mid-range. What we see is on the analog write signal is producing a waveform on pin 3, which is not analog in the sense of varying in voltage, but it is analog in the sense of varying in time. So for a large value, the upper part of that pulse, the, the, the positive uh, piece of the signal, is wider. And for lower values, the pulse width, the upper part of the signal, gets narrower. This is what we call pulse width modulation, or PWM. And it's a way of encoding an analog value in a digital signal. And it is quite useful. 
Um, a couple ways to think of it is it's either encoding information in the sense that if one were to measure the pulse width, there is some variable value there that could be reinterpreted as a number. Another is if you're actually using a signal of the shape as a source of energy, then the average energy delivered is going to be related to the pulse width. So when we drive motors, typically we use some kind of pulse width modulated signal. So to run a motor at half speed, you typically create a square wave where the duty cycle or the on time is roughly 50% on, and then that pulse width will produce a lower average energy than if the, the motor were simply connected to power. It's also possible to build analog circuits that filter that down to a voltage if you truly need some variable voltage. But it has a built-in sampling rate. There's some cycle here that uh, is actually fairly low. It's an audible rate. And so it's not, it'll, that governs how fast that analog voltage could change. So just to back up here, we have five, six channels of analog input on the Arduino. They're 10 bits, so there's 1,024 possible levels of input. They're fast enough to measure all the physical processes we need, not so fast that you'll have an easy time measuring audio rates. They have a 0 to 5 volt input range. They produce an integer value. And then we can use those values throughout our computation to, uh, as filtered, you know, to create signals that we filter and modulate and process to do other kinds of decisions. In this case, we're just using it to generate a pulse width modulated output. It uses the confusing name of analog write as the output. Um, 